Hey kids, today's video is going to cover what a good submission is according to AP. Everything that I'm going to show you today is off the AP website that you can get to. Even though they're housed here on the code.org site, all of these are taken straight from the AP College Board website. If you come to the AP Computer Science Principles tab on the AP College Board, you'll see the exam ribbon here. This will take you to a lot of information we've already covered, but it will also give you a couple more examples of submissions here. And if that's not enough, you can also go to past submissions. And we are looking at the 2017 number C. And that's the one we're going to be talking about today. This video will then just cover these three parts here. Not much has changed since 2017. We do have one update to this scoring. Last year, this was a seven out of eight. This year, this would probably be a six out of eight. Our next video is going to talk about what a bad example is and what we should try to avoid. This video though, this is going to focus on the good. So let's go ahead and watch this video first and then we'll start breaking it down. Let's go ahead and take a look at this written response from the student. As you can see here, they are on the AP College Board's template for this. Again, you can use codes, you can use your own. It just has to have the 2A, 2B, 2C parts on it. I highly, highly recommend though using a template already out there. So 2A, if you don't remember what this is going to, this is going to the rubric here. So We'll have 2A, 2B, 2C, and within those, we also have rows. I, though, highly recommend taking a look at the rubric that I created. It has a checklist for everything that you need to do and explains everything a little bit more. The rubric we're gonna look at today, though, kind of has everything all in one place, and that's what makes it so nice. So let's go ahead and break this down. As you can see, row six here, we're gonna have a little talk about what has changed, but for the most part, everything that you saw in the video is something that you want to do with your own code. And really, if you think about this, this really wasn't that complex of a code. It's essentially a clicker game. Really, it just has some story to get to that clicking part. You have to enter your name, you have to click here and there, but the treasure chest part itself, is just like the first code, the Apple game that we made. And that's where you just had to click around the screen and click on the Apple. And if you didn't click on the Apple, you lost lives. And eventually, after you lost three lives, the game was over. What you should take away from this is you don't have to come up with a crazy complex code. You just have to make sure that you are incorporating everything that the AP College Board wants. The video there, it ran for at least a minute and it went through all of the parts of the game. So what does a written response have to have to identify the program language being used? It has to identify the purpose of the program. It has to describe the features shown in the program. 
and it should have audio commentary explaining this. Now, this video I don't believe has the audio commentary. You should have audio commentary really explaining everything in here that should be in your written response. If you look on our checklist, it has the, the language we used, identifies the purpose of the program, and describes the feature shown in the video and the connection to the purpose of the program. Those three checkpoints, it gets full credit. To be deals with how the program was developed from start to finish. It wants to know distinct points, specifically two distinct points in the process, and you have to describe them in there. Not only do you have to describe whatever your problems or opportunities were, you have to explain how they were resolved. So if you look over here to the student responses, this first little part here talks about how they developed a program. And this part here discusses one of the first issues they had. This part talks about the second issue they had. And finally, how they resolved it completely. So in this one, the user not only talked about those two problems, they talked about how they solved them. And I cannot repeat that enough that you have to do that to, in order to get a point. But again, remember this is in the scope of creating the entire program. Don't just randomly make up two things. It has to fit in how it affected the final code of the program. Again, if you look back at our checklist here, we have does it describe the overall development process? Not really. It really doesn't go into detail about how this program was developed from start to finish. Remember, now in 2020 on this test, this response would not receive credit. Does it indicate whether you completed this project alone? Well, that isn't there and that probably should be incorporated. So again, I would just remember if you did work with somebody, this is the part where you want to say it. Did they describe a first difficulty or opportunity? Yes. Did they describe the source of that? Yes. Did they describe how it was incorporated or solved into the final code? Yes. And they did this for both the first and the second opportunity. This would not receive a point on row two, but would receive a point on row three. Two C has two components. The first being a written, the second is copying and pasting a segment of your code. Let's look at the copying and pasting a segment of your code first. What we are going to copy and paste is our main algorithm. And remember, not only is it just an algorithm, it's an algorithm with two sub algorithms. Those two sub algorithms have to have some sort of mathematical or logical component. Mathematical would be greater than, less than, plus or minus, any addition, subtraction. Logical are your if and else statements. So your algorithm has to incorporate one of those two. Just going, move forward, move forward, move forward, turn right would not qualify as an algorithm in this instance. Let's take a look at the written part in this one, you have to explain what the algorithm does independently, describe how the code of the algorithm works, and again, those have to use mathematical or logical concepts. This is for algorithm one and for algorithm number two. For the larger parent algorithm, you have to describe how the selected algorithm combines the included algorithms and explain how the selected algorithms help to achieve the overall purpose of the program. Let's take a look at the copy and paste portion of this section. This code would receive two of the three possible points, earning points in rows four and five, but not in six. If you notice the one, two, A and B, one of the parts of the response is that you identify the selected algorithm, the parent one, the larger one, and the two included sub algorithms. Please remember to do that when copying and pasting your code in. If we look here, there really is no parent algorithm. 
These are three separate algorithms. Now, these three separate algorithms, none of these work really together to form one giant algorithm. So they all kind of work a little independently. And while certainly, yes, you do need them to make the entire program work, what they are really looking for here is a large algorithm with two sub algorithms in it. And within those sub algorithms, each have a mathematical or logical concept. Just be careful what you're identifying here. And remember what an algorithm would be and a sub algorithm will be. Let's go ahead and take a look at this year's code. We're not gonna look at the whole program, but let's just see what they put for 2C so we can see what looks good. This one right here is just example B under the written response. Here you can see they labeled the giant parent algorithm here. And it looks like this does something with a timer and detection. They also have it labeled the child algorithm. So under this larger algorithm here of the timer, it looks like there's a collision detector for one and a death for another. So it's detecting if it hits something and if it did hit something, what happens? So right there is just a example of what a parent and child algorithm is. So looking back to this one, this one isn't going to get full credit. Remember, there's two components within 2C. This student did identify two algorithms over here, which is very important. But if you look down to row six, they did not because the algorithm consists of a single instruction. That means there was no parent algorithm in there. If we go down a little further, we just see this part right here is just pretty much saying the same thing that we said to receive a point. At least three algorithms need to be fine and explained. The selected algorithm, main algorithm, needs to include a reference to other algorithms. Defined is included algorithms in the scoring notes. It did not. It just had a bunch of separate algorithms there. And while those separate algorithms definitely fit in the logical mathematical realm, they weren't a big comprehensive parent one with two subparts. So please remember, giant algorithm, two subparts, two subparts need to have some sort of mathematical or logical concept. Next is going to be 2D here. This also has two components, a written and a copy and paste. Let's look at the copy and paste component first. This is your large abstraction. Let's go ahead and take a look at what this student put. You can see here we have a large function set blast off. And then we have three other functions, function high text, function show text, and function set character. So this larger function here, function setup blast, is made up of these three little functions down here and they're called within it. So instead of writing all of this every time, they can just call function setup blast off and it will change the text area or show the text area and change the image there. Let's see what the student wrote. So as you can see at the bottom here, they did get a point because that setup blast off function requires 12 lines of code, and then they can just call it using one line of code now. So they identified the function and then the subparts of that function and why it works is an, an abstraction. So all your abstraction is, is a large function. Again, looking at our checklist, does the response have the copy and paste it with a rectangle around it? Yes. Does it identify the abstraction by name? Yes. That is our set up blast off function. And does it describe how the abstraction manages the complexity? It absolutely does. So it gets a point for that. The final part down here is just our program code. And remember, that's where we're taking our entire code for our program, copying and pasting it into Google Docs, and then downloading that as a PDF document. Because ultimately, remember, three things get turned in. A video, this one pager, and your program code. Three things. Just one note here, 
I want to take a minute just in case I didn't cover this enough. They just have a comment here, and this is under to be describing the process of developing your code. They said on this one, this might not receive credit now because they really didn't go step by step. And as I keep saying, kids, you really need to go how it became an idea into a fully developed code. So I just want to point that out again. Well, that's it, kids. That's a good example of a create task. Our next video is going to look at what a bad example of a create task is. All right, I'll see you in the next video.